Welcome back to Caseology, and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kaylin, and on this channel, I do monthly horoscope videos for all 12 zodiac signs, along with tarot predictions for your sign. Today, I'm going to be doing your January 2021 horoscope, so be sure to watch for your rising sun and moon sign. I'm going to leave a timestamp in the comment box and the description of the video, so feel free to skip this intro if you just want to head straight to your horoscope. As for the rest of you, January is absolutely hectic. We have squares from Mars, Uranus, Saturn and Jupiter going every which way. This is going to heavily activate two of your houses in particular and of course it will change for each sign. And we also have Mercury going into retrograde at the end of the month. As per usual with Mercury retrogrades, we always have a two week pre-shadow period. So for the first couple of weeks in January, you'll have uh, a bit of a breather, you could say, but this is really the calm before the storm because come 13th of January, everything is going to go uh, haywire and there's going to be so much change and such a upswing or uptake in energy. And you know, every sign of course is going to feel it differently, but the ones who will be affected the most will be Taurus, Aquarius, Leo uh, and Scorpio. Without further ado, let's dive straight in. Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon and Risings. Happy New Year and welcome to your January 2021 horoscope. Month starts off with Mars entering Taurus in your fifth house on the 7th of January, where it will remain for three months. Your fifth house is concerned with your love life. It rules romance, children and your hobbies and passions. And certainly for the whole month of January, your fifth house is extremely activated. Now on the 8th of January, Mercury will enter Aquarius, which is in your second house. So with Mercury here, you will be thinking a lot about your finances, your valuables, your possessions. And later in the month, Mercury will actually be going retrograde. So there will be a lot of activity in your financial house as well. Now on the 9th of January, Venus will actually be entering your first house in Capricorn. So with Venus here, you'll be feeling more attractive, you'll be more diplomatic, you will be more charming and you'll just have this glow to you. And you might even be getting a makeover or just putting a lot of energy into your appearance. Now on the 13th of January, there will be a new moon in Capricorn at 23 degrees and it will be in a very tight conjunction with Pluto at 24 degrees. New moons always bring about new beginnings in some capacity and with Pluto here it actually has a uh, karmic element and impact on this new beginning for you. So this can manifest in several different ways. On the one hand you can be totally transforming your appearance at this time and that's a pretty big deal for Capricorns because being earth signs, you don't like to switch things up when it comes to your appearance too much. Now, Pluto actually rejuvenates and rebirths. So this will give you a very youthful look Capricorn and people will actually be noticing that you look re-energized, rejuvenated. And certainly if you do any drastic change to your appearance, it will have a very positive impact on you. It can be as simple as, um, you know, getting a haircut, having a makeover, or even losing some weight. But what is superficial on the outside actually represents a very deep transformation for what's going on for you on the internal side of things. So with this new moon, you can actually be transforming your life in some way and it certainly doesn't have to be physical. The first house, your ascendant house, is really about uh, you, your physical appearance but also your journey in life. So if you are a Capricorn Sun, these changes can be in relation to, or this new beginning I should say, can be in relation to your career and your goals and your aspirations. If you are a Capricorn moon, this new beginning can really be the rebirth of a new and improved emotional state for you. So you've done the hard work, you've built solid foundations and you've really 
I'm going to use the word transformed again, but transformed your emotional state of well-being, which has really been through the ringer over the last couple of years. Now, if you are a Capricorn ascendant, this uh, this new moon is likely to have a change or an impact on your physical appearance more so than if you are a Capricorn sun or moon. Now, on another level, whether you are a Capricorn sun, moon or rising, this powerful new moon and new beginning will see you being able to finally step into your power. As I've mentioned in my last video, we've seen Jupiter and Saturn leaving Capricorn and entering your second house where they formed the Great Conjunction. So really Capricorn, this is your time to rebuild solid structures and foundations in your life, which I will touch more on throughout this video. Now on the 13th of January, we will also see Mars in Taurus in your fifth house, squaring Saturn in Aquarius in your second house. As far as planet compatibility goes, these two planets don't really like each other. They don't really get along. And given that they are in a square, which is a hard aspect, otherwise known as a 90 degree aspect between the two planets, this can cause a state of inattention and frustration. But the positive manifestation of this aspect is that it can really crystallize your determination and your willpower to create a solid financial base, which is a direct result of your own creative efforts, whether that's your own business, uh, whether that's artwork that you sell or anything that you create and now you're able to turn it into a source of income. This particular transit can see you uh, spent investing money in your uh, hobbies and your passions and this can be a bit of a drain on your resources. On another level, if you have children, you might have some expenses there which again are burdensome for you with uh, in the financial department and on a different level putting effort into this business that you want to create or that you have already created can lead to you also simultaneously building a solid foundation for your sense of self-worth and self-confidence this can certainly increase your self-confidence because you'll be working towards becoming financially independent but on another level, this can actually create some kind of struggle regarding your beliefs surrounding your family traditions because the second house rules uh, history, family traditions and uh, with Saturn here, this can represent a father figure or your father. So perhaps you are concerned that your family or specifically your father won't approve of these uh, passions that you are pursuing or perhaps they're not outwardly disapproving but due to how you were raised and what you were raised to have your values as this might be going against the grain of what you always envisioned for yourself now on the 14th of January we will see Uranus being direct in Taurus in your fifth house and then a few days later, on the 18th of January, Jupiter in Aquarius in your second house will be squaring Uranus in your fifth house. So again, a lot of uh, a lot of tension and activity between your second house of finances and self worth, and your fifth house of uh, children, romance, and joy. So with this particular transit. You might be uh, spending unexpectedly on your romantic partner or you could really be, I would say, overindulging on them and they might not be expecting it or perhaps you weren't uh, thinking that you were going to spend so much money on them but it's like, whoops, my credit card fell out and you know now I've overpaid by $500. Now, on another level, this transit can see you uh, spending a lot of money on a luxury item for your own enjoyment of your hobbies and passions. And certainly we can see a huge boost in self-confidence and self-worth. And you could even be having 
uh, spontaneous fun with your, uh, with your children at this time. Now, on the 20th of January, we will see Aquarius season commence once the sun enters Aquarius, and this will be in your second house, again, which is your finances. So there'll be a lot of focus on your financial situation, your valuables, your possessions, and even your wardrobe as well. Now, on the 21st of January, Mars will be conjunct Uranus, and this will be in your fifth house. So this is quite a volatile energy because Uranus rules unexpected events, swift change and sudden upheavals. It can also bring about anything which is new in nature, but by the same token, we can see a sudden and unexpected departure from certain things. Now, Mars is an antagonistic planet and it can be quite aggressive and cause arguments, but on another level, Mars is how we take action. So the combination of these two planets being conjunct at six degrees in your fifth house can actually manifest in many different ways, and some of them are the polar opposite of each other. On one level, you can suddenly end a relationship. On a different level, you can suddenly start a new relationship. However this plays out for you, it actually will be very unexpected in nature. Other, in other words, a relationship may end quite abruptly and you, know, you weren't expecting it, or even your other partner might not have been expecting it. It can go both ways. But on the other hand, you might not be ready for a relationship, but you might meet someone new completely out of the blue and you're like, wow, this person's amazing, but I'm not ready, like things are moving quickly. So certainly things can fire up real quick in the romantic department, but they can also burn out really abruptly. Now on a different level, you might be uh, starting a new business, okay? And this can be out of the blue, people might not be expecting it, or you could have a sudden um, creative idea or a breakthrough and you're like, yes, I need to see how I can monetize this or cultivate this into something which becomes a viable and sustainable source of income for me. On a different level, if you have a business already, you might just suddenly be like, you know what, this isn't for me anymore. Cancelled. You know, I, I don't need this responsibility in my life. So you, Capricorn, you can really see how this combination of planetary energies can uh, result in the spark and the birth of something new, but it can also kill it just as quickly. Now, on a different level, you may uh, take up a new hobby or a sport and it might be quite exciting in nature or you can quit a sport or a hobby that you have done for a long time and people are like, what do you used to love that? I can't believe you're giving this up. And you're like, no, nope, there's other things out there for me. Now, if you have children, and this is more specifically for your first child, just a word of warning, be very careful with them on this date, on the 21st of January, because Mars rules fires and Uranus rules electricity. So if you are planning to go to a theme park, maybe don't do that and change it to another day or even, you know, um, give it like a week either way. And on another level, if you have young children and you're at a bonfire, you've got like a fireplace or a fire pit or whatever, just be careful with fire. Don't leave fire unattended and certainly don't uh, leave your child close to any source of fire. I know that's a random one, but you know, Capricorns are cautious. And to be honest, this transit only happens once every two years. It's not like I give this kind of advice in my videos every other month. Now on the 23rd of January, Mars in Taurus in your fifth house will be squaring Jupiter in Aquarius in your second house. So, this is unusual for Capricorn, but hey, I don't know what your other placements are. With this transit, you could be spending a lot of money on partying and risk-taking behavior. What? Capricorn? It's true though. 
because Mars is how we have fun, it's parties, it's celebrations, and Jupiter is an overindulgence of that. Mars is, get, Mars is a planet which likes to take risks, and Jupiter, square Mars, can result in uh, a sense of over-optimism, overindulgence, and certainly uh, taking risk-taking, uh, indulging in risk-taking behavior, which I would strongly advise against during, well, especially during this transit, guys. Now, on a different level, efforts that you put into uh, your uh, passions and hobbies can see you starting to learn about finances and business studies. Because again, we have this combination of what you like to do, potentially creating your own business, and this being concerned with your financial uh, department and your resources. So you might be, and Jupiter represents learning and knowledge. So you might be wanting to learn about how you can make better financial decisions to restructure things. And this can lead to you uh, being able to pursue the opportunities that you want to pursue. On a different level, uh, this can actually give you a sudden boost of self-esteem. And this actually is what gives you the determination the determination to pursue this passion or hobby. And this is really going full throttle with that because Mars and Jupiter, they, they play off each other, right? So this, this particular transit can see Jupiter expanding whatever it touches, which is Mars's attitude and exuberance towards achieving its goals. So we can really see Capricorn, Sun, Moon and Risings being extremely optimistic and determined to achieve their financial goals. Now, on the 29th of January, we will see the full moon in Leo at eight degrees, being opposite Saturn at four degrees and Jupiter at nine degrees. So the full moon is occurring in your eighth house in Leo, and it's opposite Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius in your second house. Now, this can play out in a few different ways, of course, as always. On the one hand, you could be receiving an inheritance as denoted by the eighth house, but this um, this could actually take a long time to get to you, unfortunately. But nonetheless, the decision is made or the announcement has been made that you will receive this, uh, this inheritance, but then some work needs to be done to actually um, to receive it, as I said. On a different level, you may see a boost in your mutual resources with your partner, okay? That can be your marriage partner, your life partner, your business partner, or this can be a boost in the money that you make off your client services that you offer. Now, on a different level, you might actually feel like you now have closure on a psychologically traumatic uh, event that happened to you. And this could be relating to your father, a father figure, or someone who was in position of authority over you. And that's because uh, both Saturn and Jupiter rule authority figures and father figures in some capacity. And, you know, Capricorn, it doesn't have to be closure relating to a father figure. But in any case, if this pertains to you where you've had some kind of phobia or a fear or an event, a traumatic event that you can't quite get past, you will feel like you can actually close the book on this issue which has been troubling you. Now, uh, lastly, with this particular transit, emotional intimacy with your partner may have actually peaked and now you feel like you have stability in your relationship and in your emotional security regarding that relationship. And this can now actually add to your sense of self-worth as again, it's denoted by the second house. Lastly, for the month on the 31st of January, we have Mercury being retrograde in Aquarius in your second house. And don't forget guys that uh, you had the great conjunction in Aquarius occurring in your second house, which is all about your finances, how you make money and your valuables and possessions. But this video is already too long, so I'm going to talk to you about this in my February 2021 video because Mercury Retrograde will be for three weeks and really, you know, you'll, you'll feel the pre-shadow effect from mid-month, but it's really going to kick into gear from the beginning of February. 
So that's all I have for you for January. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from me, please subscribe to K-Astrology. I've actually uploaded the January 2021 tarot predictions for your zodiac sign. So I will leave a link in the description for you if you want to check that out. Enjoy your January and I will see you guys next month.